Welcome to Worship La Casa family. It's me, Connor, and today I'm joined with Lauren Moulton. She is our newest worship volunteer, as well as one of our AV interns this summer. She's been learning all kinds of things with our whole staff about how we do things around here. And also joined with us working behind the camera is our other AV intern, Chase Coletta. Say hi, Chase. Hello. So Lauren, we're several weeks now into our internship. How's it going? It's been going great. Um... It's been truly an amazing experience. I love hearing that. Chase, how's the internship been for you, man? Connor, something really cool I've gotten out of this internship is learning the ins and outs of the audio interface with the classrooms and the fellowship hall. Well, thank you guys both so much. We really appreciate you. I know myself and Chris and Gary and Derek, we've all had a great time working with you as well. And so, as you all know, VBX is about to start, but not too long after that is confirmation camp. I'm gonna be going up there to help Miss Susan. And you know what, Lauren, aren't you going on camp too? Awesome, are you excited? Yes, I'm very excited. Awesome, you know what, Let, let's go find Miss Susan and see if she needs any help with some last minute preparations. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Bye, Chase. Hey, Susan, Lauren and I were just, uh, whoa. Susan, what happened? Oh my goodness, Connor. I feel like we just got back from summer trip and here I am packing for confirmation camp. I have to get all this stuff organized to go up to Sedona with a bunch of amazing teenagers. Hey, not a problem, Susan. Lauren and I will give you a hand. And in the meantime, please pray for myself and Susan, our high school leaders, our volunteers, as well as the students that we have an amazing confirmation camp weekend as we grow closer to each other and with God. I don't know where they went, so let's begin worship. Man, I'm glad somebody told us what to do. <laughs> trying to remember why I was up here. Good, I'm, I'm being silly. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. It's so nice to see your smiling faces here. I hope you're feeling good today. I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, the song we're opening up with is called Counting on God, and I think most of you that, that attend here know it, but... I was just thinking for a moment, where would I be with, without the love of God? Where would I be without His grace in my life, without His mercy, just overwhelming me every day, you know? You think about all of the struggles that we deal with in life and all the challenges that we face. Um, and so often it feels like we do that alone, you know, we, you're just kind of dealing with your stuff and trying to, you know, where do, where do I get help from? And I know if you're anything like me, you've experienced the grace of God and where he's just been faithful and there to comfort you and guide you and hold you. And I uh, thought we could take a moment this morning as we sing, as we lift up the name of Jesus, to think about that. Think about who he is, how awesome he is. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able and let's, uh, let's make some noise. <laughs> Go ahead.
It is a new horizon And I'm set on you And you meet me here today With mercies that are new All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long When I believe you are The way The truth The life Let's give them a hand, they do a great job for us. Grab a seat, and uh, we have a very special opportunity at this time. We're kind of doing something uh, unique at all four of our worship services. We're gonna invite up not only our children that are present, but all of our VBX volunteers. We've been doing this all weekend at all of our services. So if you're a young person for our children's message, come on up at this time, come on up. And also if you're a VBX volunteer, whether you're in the kitchen, working as a teacher, assistant, administrator, whatever it is, come on up, come on up. We're gonna have you stand, come on. We're gonna have you stand. Everyone's gonna stand, come on. Good. And let's face the congregation. All right, good, good. All right, awesome. All the way down, here we go. Yeah, stand right next to Miss Stacy. there we go. All right, so what we've been doing at all these services is we've been commissioning all of our volunteers for VBX, and uh, that's been awesome uh, to see that at each service, but also even more awesome is we start tomorrow, and we'll have hundreds of kids on our campus here uh, Monday through Friday this week, and we're blessed to uh, be that outreach in the community. For those of you that don't know her, Stacy is our Director of Children's Ministry, and also she is our Director of VBX, so I'm going to let her share a little bit more about VBX this week. We are so, oh, this is loud. Um, we are so excited for VBX and truly could not do it without these people up here, as well as all of them at the other services. Um, a fun fact that I've shared is that 80 of our volunteers are youth. And so um, ages seventh grade to 12th grade, 80 of them. And I just think that speaks so highly. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So we are excited and ready for a really fun-filled week. Um, the campus is always buzzing at this time, and um, I'm excited now on Friday. I may have a little less energy, but um, we are just so excited for a fun week. And I'm going to ask Lily really quick, what are you excited about for VBX? Excited to stand on the lines. Ooh, to stand on the lines. Like it. Organized. Love it. <laughs> Anything else you're excited for? Everything else, too. Everything else, too. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Thanks. And let's uh, thank Stacy and Heather. They do a lot for VBX and have organized us a lot. Thank you. They've also been at all four worship services this weekend. They've been officially commissioned four times and had to listen to four sermons, so they get extra merit points, all right? So, um, but uh, we also want to say a way in which you can be involved. One of the reasons I wanted the kids up here and all of our VBX volunteers is because so much of what we do here is intergenerational and it's so important that we reach out to all generations. But you may be asking how you can help. And anytime during the next five days, you can either bring to VBX or to the church office jars, plastic jars, Jars, not glass, of peanut butter or jelly. Um, that is our outreach and what VBX is doing to reach out into our community to feed the hungry and homeless. So drop those off at the church office or drop them off at VBX. We'd love to have you participate in this way. So at this time, I'm going to ask those who are assembled here up front, is it your desire to share in reaching our kids this week with the good news of God in Christ Jesus and all that we do and say? If so, would you answer yes by the help of God? Yes, by the help of God. And will you, as the community of La Casa de Cristo, along with our other three worship services, will you support them through your prayers, through your donations to our food bank, and all the other ways in which you can be involved this week? If so, would you answer yes by the help of God? Yes. Let's pray together. Lord, we are so grateful uh, as we continue to fulfill our mission statement to love those who don't know Jesus and grow those who do. 
We will have hundreds of kids on the campus this week. Many of them may not know you, and we are grateful for that, that we can be that lighthouse in this community, that beacon of hope for them and for their families. So as we go through this week, keep us safe, watch over us, and guide us in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's give a hand to all these folks again. And I'm going to invite them to go back to their seats. And as they move back to their seats, you can move out of your seats. Let's greet one another, share the peace of God with each other.
Brenda, would you come up and read the scriptures this morning? Good morning. It's found on page 737 in the Bibles located in the back, the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, beginning with verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or weep, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than the birds. Who of you, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life, since you cannot do this very little thing? Why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and do not set your heart or what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things and your father knows that you need them but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well do not be afraid little flock for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom the gospel of the lord thank you brenda those words that we just heard read are words that are easy to hear and difficult to live out don't worry about anything don't have anxiety about anything. See the birds of the air, how God takes care of them. So we too should not worry. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us as well. It's easy to listen to or to read those words, but if we were to sit down and take the next couple of hours here and really talk to one another, we would find out all of us here in this gathering place or those watching online that each and every one of us has some sort of burden, some sort of worry, some sort of anxiety, some sort of fear. And it's probably as different as it, we are different people. For some of us, those worries, those fears may be related to a broken relationship, maybe the fallout of a divorce or the fallout of a broken situation amongst a family unit. Maybe for some of us, the fears, the worries, and the anxieties come in the form of health limitations or concerns about what's going on with our health or the health of a loved one. Or maybe it's a concern at, at work, a problem with a colleague or a problem with a supervisor and, and things just don't seem to be going well for you in your workplace right now. Or maybe the concern or the worry is for a friend or a family member or a situation that's going on in your life. We each have different burdens. We each have different worries, concerns, and fears in life. So we hear these words don't have any anxiety, don't have any worry, and they kind of ring a little bit hollow because to be human is to have those burdens. And I think here's the reality in life that you and I, because we're used to achieving things in life, we believe that's the way to power through the burdens, the challenges, the worries, and the fears, and the anxieties we have. Because after all, we're used to achieving, achieving in school, achieving in sports, achieving in the work environment, achieving in our families, all of those things. And, and our whole society, our nation, our culture is built upon achievement. But what I want to suggest this morning is we look at things in a very different way. And, and you know, that, that struggle for independence, that struggle for achievement begins at a young age. I heard a humorous story this week about little Bobby who was at his home and he kind of had a temper tantrum meltdown with his parents and he decided that he was gonna run away from home. So he's in this confrontation with his mom in the kitchen. She says, well, Bobby, I wanna know when you get hungry, what are you gonna do after you've run away from home? And he says, oh, I'll come back and you guys will feed me. You know, that we'll take care of that. And then she says, well, what are you gonna do when your clothes get dirty? He says, well, I'm gonna come back and you're gonna wash my clothes. And then she says, what are you going to do when you're, you're broke? You don't have any money. He says, oh, I'll come back and you and dad will give me some money. Well, by now dad had heard there was this ruckus going on in the kitchen. And he came in and asked his wife what's going on. And she said, well, Bobby was just explaining to us that he's going to run away from home. And when he's broke, he's going to come home for money. He's going to come home to get his clothes washed. And he's going to come home also to get food if he's hungry. And he says, 
honey, he's not running away from home. He's just preparing years in advance to go away to college. <laughs> and so the reality is, and if you have kids that have done that, believe me, it's true. Money, food, clothes, yeah, it's all there. But the reality is, is that when we face these burdens, when we face these challenges in life, we want to just power through them. We believe that we're in control. So we believe the best thing we can do is just maximize our control, maximize the situation, and do it by achieving more and more. So we work harder, or we push harder in our families, or we try to do this, or we try to do that. But when we hear again the words of the gospel this morning, we understand it's not about achievement, but it's about receiving God's grace and mercy. It's not about the achievements of life, but about receiving his grace and mercy and then sharing that with others. Now, I, I want to use an example from the world of music. You know, if week after week at this 1030 service, we only had solos, vocalist solos, drum solos, guitar solos, or whatever. It'd be pretty cool the first couple of weeks, and we have wonderful musicians here, and they would keep it interesting. But sooner or later, if it was only solos week after week, if it was only one person up here on stage, if it was only, you know, after a while, there'd be no variety. So that's why it's important we have the whole band or in our traditional service, why we don't only have a trumpet or a violin solo or a vocalist solo, but we also have the entire choir or the bell choir as they shared their gifts with us earlier this morning. All of that's important. And that lesson can apply to you and me in life. Because what we can know then is life is not about flying solo all the time. It's not about what we want, what we get, how we can maximize what we desire in life, but we are part of this chorus called the saints of God, the priesthood of all believers. And we all have our gifts, and those blend together with different talents, different gifts, to make beautiful music and to make God's harmony in life. That's what we'll see in VBX this week, because there's all sorts of different gifts, people that are up front and people that are behind the scenes, people that we may never even see the entire week, but they're so crucial to the outcome of the entire week. In a few weeks, we're going to be going with our junior high youth up to confirmation camp in Sedona, and there too, we'll see that blessing blending together. And a couple weeks after that, we have our Mexico mission trip. So there's a lot going on this month, but we see that all blending together, and we are all part of that great humanity. But we still come back to the question, to these words that we hear or we read, do not worry. Don't have any anxiety. Is that realistic in life? Is that really realistic, even for a child of God, even for a believer in Jesus Christ? I think it is. And while we're always going to have some degree of concern, brokenness, fear, worry, anxiety in our life, it helps when we get a proper perspective. And when we put some things in perspective as they fell into place for me this past week, then we can understand. Now, you need to understand the background of this. About two, three weeks ago, I was really stressed out because our hot water heater broke at our house. Made a mess, it was horrible, you know, took a couple days to figure the whole thing out, get it all fixed and get it all put back. Last week, my wife and I, Sue, we went on vacation to see our daughter back east and part of that trip was seeing some elderly relatives and part of it was stopping at the Lutheran Church in the cemetery in southern Pennsylvania, New York, where my family had been a part of that church for over 200 years. And you're going to see up on the screen a tombstone in that cemetery as we walked it. There's about eight different of our family members in this cemetery, the most recent being my grandfather and grandmother. But that's not who this tombstone is. There's a flag by it because we visited the day before the 4th of July. This was my great, 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 great grandfather, Henry Ruby, who served in the 200th Pennsylvania Regiment during the Civil War. He fought the last two years of the war, including the battles of Richmond and Petersburg, and was there when Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox. And he went home and raised his family in Pennsylvania and farmed the land. And I was grateful as I looked at his tombstone for the fact that men and women like this, as we just celebrated on the 4th of July, have fought for our freedom 
and I had gratitude. And then I turned around, and as I turned around, I looked back at the farmhouse near the church where my grandfather and father had grown up. My grandfather only had an eighth grade education, but he was one of the smartest men that I ever knew. He grew up as a farmer. He served part-time to make money during the Depression as the church's custodian, and later on became a furniture maker. But he and my dad and my dad's sister and his wife, they grew up in that home. And I realized here I'd been worried about this hot water heater. They had no running water, hot water. They had no indoor plumbing. They didn't have many of the things that we take for granted. They didn't have a refrigerator. They kept everything in the cellar out in the farm. And I began to realize that really life truly is a matter of adjusting our perspective on things. So when we hear these words, don't worry, don't have anxiety, seek first God's kingdom, it, Jesus understood it's not a Pollyannish statement that somehow if we just pray or believe in Jesus, all of our problems are going to go away and he's going to snap his fingers and everything's going to be wonderful in our life and we're going to have this Pollyanna existence. That, that is not what it means to be a human being. But what he did say is when we realize when we have hearts full of gratitude for not only what Jesus has done for us, but for what others have done before us and how they have gone before us and provided for us, then we're able to put that all in perspective. Then we're able to understand in our life truly with all the anxieties and fears we have that have only been exacerbated in the past three or four years by everything else going on in the world, then we can truly turn that over to him. There's three questions over the past few years that I've begun to ask myself whenever I find myself getting worried, and maybe they'll be helpful to you, maybe they won't be helpful to you, but I hope that you will find them a little bit helpful in terms of when you face a moment in your life, when you feel burdened, when you feel worried, when you feel anxious. The first question I ask is this, is this a first world problem? And what I mean by is this a first world problem is most of the world doesn't have clean water, they don't have three meals a day, they don't have clothes, different clothes that they can wear every day like you and me. They don't have that. So truly is what we're worried and getting stressed about a first world problem that is going to pass temporarily. My hot water heater is a first world problem. And when we put that in perspective, then we can understand that. The second question I ask is this, is this situation, is this problem going to matter a year or five years from now? And if the answer is yes, then maybe it's time to pay attention to that. But if the answer is no, to recognize this too truly will pass and to understand in that situation what we need to do to frame that proper perspective. And the last one, perhaps most important, is this to truly each and every day take the time, even if it's only for a few seconds, to adjust our perspectives and attitudes and turn to God in prayer and say, Lord, take this worry, take this burden, take this fear from me. You know, they've actually done studies, and I find this fascinating. They've monitored people's blood pressure and their heart rate when they're praying and they turn things over to God. And they find that their blood pressure and their heart rate dramatically lowers because all of a sudden people understand the burden isn't on them anymore. It's not up to us to achieve our way out of this particular problem. It's up to us to receive God's grace, to seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and then God will add everything unto us as well. Now again, that doesn't mean problem solved instantly. God will answer the situation in his own timing, and there may be pain involved. There may be a situation where we have to also adjust our own attitudes and perspectives. So why don't you try this on for size? The next time you have a problem at work with a coworker or a supervisor, or whatever the case may be, instead of complaining and dwelling on that, be thankful to God that you have a job and that you have income because not everyone does. The next time you're trying to find meaning in your retirement, trying to find your purpose, be thankful to God you've reached a place in your life that you can retire and you have the resources to do that and God will lead you in new directions 
in terms of volunteer service or, or how you need to reach out to someone with care. The next time you're inordinately worried about a family member or maybe there's broken communication, maybe you need to look in the mirror and realize that you're being just as stubborn as that other person where the communication problem is. And maybe you need to show a little more respect and a little more flexibility. And in doing that, maybe it will shake things loose and things will be able to improve. If you're in a situation where you're inordinately worried about your finances, where the pace of inflation is outpacing your income or your resources, go back to the scripture for today. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the lilies of the field. If God takes care of them that way, will he not also take care of you? Achievements are wonderful things. Our society is based upon achievements. Work, home, sports, school. I make no plea to bypass striving to do and being the best we can be. But when it comes to our faith, and our life, it's all about receiving. Receiving God's grace and mercy, and then as we receive that, to share that with others. Are you worried? Are you fearful? Are you anxious? Do you have a burden? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you as well. Amen. I'm going to invite the band to come back out for our offering today. And I want to just take a moment here to expand our definition of what offering is. I think many of us associate it with either giving our resources electronically or putting something in the plate, and that's one part of offering. But our offering to God is also the offering of our entire lives and our resources to God. So there's one way you can do that specifically today. Our custodians work very, very, very hard here. They get here at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and work all day, every day. And our four custodians are wonderful and they have to break down after worship today and get ready for VBX. So if you can stay just a few minutes and not do the Lutheran 40 yard dash out the door and stack the chairs in, in stacks of five at the end of worship, that can be an offering that you can share with God. Let's offer God our praise through song and also through our offerings.
Good morning, Father. As we gather this morning and come to you in prayer, we confess that far too often we try to just power our way through life. That we believe if only we can do more or control more, that somehow then that will make everything right. Help us to see through the words of today's gospel that we can be at peace. We cannot be fearful. We cannot be anxious. We cannot worry when we place these things in your hands. And while we still live in a world of brokenness and pain, we also know that you have the whole world in your hands and that things will work out to your glory. Help us to know that, help us to see that, and help us to live that and to believe that. This day, we lift up to you all those who are suffering in any way, those who are suffering in adversity from hunger or homelessness. Help us to be your hands and feet in helping them through this congregation. Those who are suffering from adverse weather, those who are suffering in places of warfare and disease. Help us through our ministries and our mission partnerships and all that we sponsor and share in to continue to work for your kingdom here on earth. God, we also lift up to you those in our family of faith in need of your care and your healing hand because you are the great physician. So we lift up to you those that are anticipating surgery. Buffy McKeon, Gary Sales, Mike Sales. We ask you surround them with your healing hand. Be also with those in rehabilitation hospitals. Joyce Mann, Ray Benage, Roy Colson. And for those recuperating, Mary Nutting, Dave Wilson, and Mark Hayden. Lord, the names we share now are all members of the La Casa de Cristo family that are going through a journey with cancer. And whether they are in treatments or in remission or whatever stage they are at in their journey, you know them by name. We lift their names up now. Ariane, Mike, Dana, Rosie, Sherry, Linda, Al, Teresa, Matt, Jay, Donna, Tina, Myron, Lynn, Steve, Sue, Doris, Chad, Renee, Corey, Dave, Richard, Linda, Roger, Tina, Karen, Paul, Lisa, Char, Mike, Larry, Debbie, Vern, Sue, Paul, Sheila, Nancy, Dean, and Brad. We ask as the great physician, you would heal them. Lord, we lift up to you these folks in our congregation who are in hospice care, surround them with your light and your promise. For Donna Wheeldryer, Donna Lagerquist, Ann Smith, Marcy Hans, Renee Donnelly. And Lord, the Easter promise is real. And even though Easter seems so long ago in this spring, your Easter promise is eternal. So we lift up to you those that have experienced the death of a loved one. We lift up to you Sharon Hovland in the death of her husband, Edgar, Nancy Valenti in the death of her father, Edgar. And we pray also for Cade and Shay in the death of their grandfather. Lord, surround them and surround each of us with your grace and your mercy. God, help us truly to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and know that everything that we need will be added unto us as well. And we now pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Today is usually the point in the service where we receive the ironic benediction that Aaron first shared with the people of Israel, but we're going to do something a little different today. The challenge for you today is for you to be a blessing to someone else. So make it a point this week for you to be a blessing to someone you don't know in your life, a blessing to someone you're not related to, that you're not familiar with, to be a blessing to them in their life. And that is our benediction and blessing to each other as the song 
that we just sang said, let us be the new wine of Jesus to each other, and as we have received, share with others. Today is the day, and we stand and we sing boldly together our last song at this time as we proclaim our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us sing together. Upon your truth, 